as we discussed before there are different types uh, mainly two types of um, elements available for a finite element analysis so what which one will we choose this topic is about choosing between solid and shell elements certain classes of shapes can be modeled using solid or shell elements such as the model discussed earlier the selection of element type used for modeling may depend on the objective of analysis however more often the nature of geometry dictates what type of element to use for meshing parts produced by casting lend themselves to be meshed use solid elements while sheet metal structure is best meshed with shell elements first order elements both solid and shell should be used only for preliminary studies with specific objectives such as verifying direction of loads or resistance or calculating reaction forces so this is a uh, simple steps uh, as we can see where we use uh, casting for product uh, pro product pro production of a certain product we we use uh, solid elements and where we use sheet metal type of structure uh, we normally use shell elements and uh, the first order solid or shell elements both are used for preliminary uh, studies only so next move let's move to the next slide okay so uh, as i said previously that we will learn about degrees of freedom uh, here is degrees of freedom the degrees of freedom or dof of a node is finite element mesh define the ability of the node to perform translation or rotation the number of degrees of freedom that node possesses depends on the type of element that the node belongs to nodes of solid solid elements have three degrees of freedom while nodes of shell elements have six degrees of freedom in order to describe transformation of a solid element from the original to the deformed shape we need to know only three translational complements components of nodal displacement for each node in the case of shell elements we need to know not only the translational components of nodal displacement but also the rotational displacements of the components consequently built-in or rigid constraints applied to solid elements require only three degrees of freedom to be constrained the same constraints applied to shell elements require that all six of freedom to be considered failure to constant rotational degrees of freedom may result in unintentional hinges support in place of the intended rigid support so here we have got a clear idea about degrees of freedom we will move to the next slide so calculations how we calculate uh, calculate in finite element analysis uh, is degrees of freedom of each node in a finite element mesh constitutes an unknown in structural analysis degrees of freedom assigned to nodes can be thought of a of as nodal displacement displacements are primarily unknown and calculated first so we calculate the displacement of any node first in FEA if you we use solid elements three displacement per node will be calculated if we use shell elements six displacement component will be calculated the rotational one and the uh, general one uh, all other aspects of the analysis such as stress strain are calculated based on the nodal displacement so we calculate the nodal displacement first and then the stress and strain are calculated based on the uh, nodal displacement for thermal analysis the primary unknowns are nodal temperatures so if we want to analyze the thermal uh, analysis if we run the thermal analysis uh, we first calculate uh, or if we first calculate uh, nodal, uh, nodal temperatures all other results available in a thermal analysis are calculated based on the nodal temperature so uh, this is the process of calculating uh, calculations in FEA FEA first calculate the displacement and on the basis of that displacement it calculate the next uh, steps so let's move to the next uh, interpretation of FEA analysis the result of FEA are provided either in a, in the form of displacement strains or stresses for a structure analysis or in the form of temperature temperature gradients and heat flux for the thermal analysis how do we decide between a past or a failed design 
so to answer these questions we need to establish some criteria to interpret FEA results for example the maximum acceptable deformation maximum stress or the lowest acceptable natural frequency displacement or frequency criteria are quite obvious and easy to establish but but stress stress criteria are not let's assume that we conduct a stress analysis in order to ensure that stresses are within an acceptable range to assess stress and stress result we need to understand the mechanism of potential failure if the part breaks what is the com stress component is responsible for that failure well to gain clear idea about that we will discuss about von Mises stress and principal stress which are both common stress measures used for evaluating structural safety so what is von Mises stress and principal stress to learn this next let's, let's move to the next slide so here is uh, the details about von Mises stress von Mises stress also known as Huber stress is a stress measure that accounts for all six three comp all six stress components of a 3d state of stress two components of shear stress and one component of normal stress here in this figure if we see uh, tau x uh, tau x y or uh, tau uh, x uh, y x are uh, the two component of shear stress and one component which is delta z it is uh, denoting the uh, shear uh, normal stress here so uh, if two components of shear state and one component of the normal stress act on each side of an elementary cube due to equilibrium requirements the general 3d state of stress is characterized by only six stress components because of equalities here is a equation where uh, the relation between the shear stress are shown so the von Mises stress equation can be expressed by stress components that are defined in a global coordinate system as here uh, we have the equation for the von Mises stress for this uh, particular cube this is the cube of uh, the uh, of the total model the finite element of a large model this is the small cube element we are talking about here so the stress will be this equation so uh, this is von Mises stress so if you move to the next one here we will see the principal stress the, the state of stress can be described by three principal stress components whose direction are normal to the face of an elementary stress cube so uh, if we uh, yeah if we change the uh, equation previous equation into this uh, delta 1 delta 2 and delta 3 format if we get uh, this stress equation for a uh, elementary cube so von Mises stress is a non-negative scalar value von Mises stress is a uh, is a commonly used stress measure because the structural safety of many engineering materials showing elast elastoplastic properties such as steel is still described by von Mises stress magnitude in SOLIDWORKS simulation principal stresses are denoted as p1 p2 and p3 p1 stress which is usually tensile is used when evaluating stress results in part, parts made of brittle, brittle material whose safety is better related to P1 than to von Mises stress. P3 is used to examine comprehensive stress and contact pressure. So this is the uh, stress uh, details about uh, structural analysis and finite element analysis. So uh, this uh, all these lectures are uh, just the theoretical uh, topic we need to know before uh, move into the practical lessons uh, so let's move to the next slide here we can see the limitations of SOLIDWORKS simulation with any FEA software we need to take advantage of its strengths as well as work within its limitation analysis with SOLIDWORKS simulation is conducted under this following assumptions which are the material is needed needed to be linear the structural deformations are needed to be small and loads are needed to be static this is the limitation for solidworks simulation these assumptions are typical of the fea software used in design environment and the vast majority of fea projects run successfully within these limitations so 
this is the end of our theoretical part uh, about uh, structure analysis uh, i hope uh, the theory is uh, clear to you uh, and if we, you want to learn more about uh, theory of about structure analysis uh, i will um, suggest you some books at the end of this tutorial uh, please follow them you will uh, it will you will have a clear idea about the uh, structure analysis uh, of any structure so let's move to the tutorial uh, let's move to the uh, practical lessons where we will learn about structure analysis using solidworks simulation uh, thank you for uh, now